ان الحمد لله وحده الصلاه والسلام على من لا من لا نبي بعده وبعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد الله سبحانه وتعالى has blessed us with many parts of bodies and which some of them are essentially important some are lesser important but each and every part of body is important in our previous sessions we have discussed about the importance of the heart as we have discussed that heart is is a chief organ both biologically as well as uh, spiritually both significance are due to the heart it's one of the essential part in our body as one of the hadith says prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if it is set right all the parts of body are set right if it is corrupted the all, all other parts are corrupted and then there are few other parts which are also Im- immensely important not in terms of our bio- biological existence rather our spiritual existence and uh, of such important and essential parts of body is also a tongue our tongue physically physiologically if you don't have the tongue so it, we are not able to communicate with others we can see this blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can communicate with others we can express our in the most thoughts to others is all by the source of our tongue by the source of our speech so it is one of the one of the great blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the humanity and even allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this favor in the quran alam naj'al lahu aynayn did i not made his eyes did i not make his eyes wa lisanan wa shafatayn wa lisan and the tongue in arabic tongue means lisan wa lisanan wa shafatayn the tongue and the two lips uh the entire phonology depends upon the two lips you imagine that we have the tongue we have everything but we don't have the lips if we just make our mouth open if we don't join the two lips then we are not able to pronounce the words so it will be just screaming and cries and nothing else so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with with the two lips and with the tongue as it is physiologically important so it is it is also spiritually important and uh, however as far as we when we discuss about the heart that it can take a person to the higher levels of the spirituality but at the same time it can drown a person into the depths of the jahannam depending upon how it is trained depending upon how it is being tamed depending upon what teachings are supplied to it same thing applies to the tongue as well tongue is a source which which can make it to get closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which can make a person to go to the depths of the jahannam so tongue is essentially important however tongue and heart they are interconnected there's a relationship between tongue and the heart if the heart is pure it is the having the khashi of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it will be manifested and reflected through the tongue of a person if there is evil inside the heart if there is evil or there is corruption in the heart that corruption will be reflected through the tongue of a person through the speech of a person so now in this uh, session we are going to discuss some of the flaws of the tongue imam al ghazali says rahimahullah there are various flaws which are related to the tongue and for which man finds special inclination in his heart stimulated by his human temperament silence is the only way with which man can escape from or get rid of such flaws therefore it may be better to speak first about the virtue of silence before dealing with the flaws pertaining to the tongue as every disease has a remedy or every every sickness has a cure and if there are flaws with the tongue if tongue is full of flaws then there is also remedy to it there is also cure to it and what's cure to the tongue 
if silence, if speech is hosting a lot of problems, then it is cure is to observe the silence. That's why Prophet Sallallahu whoever laps into silence got the salvation. And so salvation lies, the true salvation lies in observing the silence. But there are, what are the forms of silence, how to observe the silence, and what are the adab of silence, and what are the different forms of speeches. We discuss it, inshallah, in our, in our session. So first of all, it should be known that silence comprehends man's determination and reads his mind of wasteful thoughts. The one of the, we can say the outcome or product of, of silence is that when a person observes deep silence, that he doesn't talk much. When you talk, when a person talks much, then he has to think more. And thinking more means inviting more and more thoughts. On the other hand, when a person keeps mum, he doesn't discuss about anything. So it means he is blocking the way to the random thoughts. And uh, it was reported that the Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever guaranteed the chastity of what is between his two jaw bones and what is between his two legs, that is, that is his tongue, and his private parts, I guarantee paradise for him, reported by Al-Bukhari. So two things are mentioned which Prophet ﷺ, whoever guarantees me of these two things. So one, what is between his two, bo two jaw bones, that is his tongue. Our tongue is between the two jaw bones. Whoever guarantees me means, who, whoever guarantees that he will not use his speech in evil, he will not speech. He will not use his speech in a violation of the commandments of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He will need, he will not practice any evil through his speech. The first thing is this, and second, who protects his chastity or her chastity, doesn't go, doesn't approach to the unlawful activities. Prophet Sallallahu Taala Wasallam, I guarantee paradise for him. So these are two important things. If you see now. We have discussed in our previous session the importance of uh, these biological needs. And now one more thing is added, that is the tongue. If one's tongue is uh, safe, if one's tongue does not speak venom against anything, which is against the commandments of the Sharia, then Prophet wasallam, Jannah is for him. And Prophet guarantees a Jannah for him. If a person, if any MP or any minister, he promises us that, okay, I will give you a job. I will, or I will do this thing for you. So a person is now, same person sure. That there is no any doubt about it because the, the minister himself told me, I will do this, I will do this for you. So our trust upon the minister is more. However, when Prophet said this, when Prophet said this, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our trust should be multiplied by many folds. That he said this, I guarantee paradise for him. It means that those who try to control their speech and try to fix the problems and flaws of the tongue, so half of the paradise they got. Because this hadith is talking about two things. One, his tongue and second, his private parts. So moreover, in the well-known hadith reported on the authority of Ma'ad ibn Jabal anhu, the Prophet wasallam took hold of his tongue and said, Restrain this. Kuffa alayka lisanak. Mu'ad anhu said, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, will what we say be held against us? He said, May your mother be bereaved of you. Thaqilatka ummuk. Ya Mu'adh, may your mother be bereaved of you, Mu'adh. Is there anything that topless people on their faces or he said on their noses into hellfire other than the justice of their tongues? A jest, J-E-S-T, jest means joking, jokings and the easy things. The justice of their tongues, this hadith is reported by Imam At-Tirmidhi, rahimahullah. 
Imam uh, Sayyidina Abidi Mas'ud radiallahu said that there is nothing that is in more need of imprisonment than my tongue. And Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, he said, be just to your ears as you are to your tongue. You have been provided with two ears and only one tongue so that you may hear more than you speak. Subhanallah. That's how Abu Darda radiallahu anhu says. So, we have been blessed with two eyes to see and to be watchful of everything. But at the same time, with one tongue so that we should speak less. Quran says, مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ There is no any word which a person pronounces. مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ There is no any speech which a person makes. Illa except لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ They are too watchful and wakeful. They are too vigilant angels writing about Whatever we pronounce, whatever we say, there is nothing is unnoticed, nothing is unheard of. It is all being heard and it is all being recorded. So we have to be very, very cautious about it. So tongue is immensely important. You see, how wicked the tongue is, if, if, if we see the, the harmful effects of the tongue, when a person speaks lie or commits the ghibah, backbiting, or anything else which causes other people to feel offended if their sentiments are hurt, and sometimes it may trigger the it, it, it may trigger the violence violence as well, it may trigger the conflict as well, and many a conflicts lead to the beating. When a person is saying something wrong to other person. And he try. He wants to beat him. He won't beat the tongue at all. The sin is committed by tongue, but other parts of body are supposed to face the burden. The other parts are made to see the music of what tongue has earned. But on the part of the tongue, it is just hidden behind. It is hidden within the two jaw bones. Protect itself. Quite imprisoned. But other parts of body, head, shoulder, and the legs and the arms of a person get hurt. So we need to be very careful about it. That's what Ibn Masood says, anhu, it deserves to be imprisoned. If it is imprisoned, then a person can save himself from uh, many sorts of, many sorts of flaws. And... Uh, one of the occasion at one of the occasions, Sayyidina Umar anhu, he entered upon Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq anhu. and he saw him in the room. He was just uh, he was pulling his tongue. And Sayyidina Umar anhu, he asked him, Ma, Ma, don't do this. What are you doing? He said, Omar, Hada awradani al Mawajid. This has spoiled me. This has taken me to the places of danger means this is dangerous so tongue is which takes as I said before beside the heart tongue is the thing which takes a person to the to close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and which can also take a person to the depths of the Jahannam now we try to find out what are the flaws pertaining to the speech uh, the first flaw first flaw is speaking about meaningless and insignificant matters Whoever realizes the true value of his time and that it is his capital, capital in life does not spend it in trifling matters. This is because such a recognition prevents his tongue from indulging into meaningless speeches. The Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said, part of one's being a good Muslim is his leaving alone that which does not concern him. Min husni islam il mar'i in Arabic context, it's known as la yani. La yani means meaningless. Yani meaningful. La yani meaningless, which which are neither beneficial in terms of dunya nor in terms of akhirah. So they ne neither benefit here nor there. 
then why to just indulge in such things? So this is the first thing that is la uh, yani tarku ya la yani. So Prophet sallallahu taala has uh, in this hadith he has he has outlined the character of the believer. So what are the characteristics characteristics of a believer? That he never gets involved or indulged into the into the meaningless things, and that's known as lagu also. Lagu. Allah says in Surah Al-Mu'minun, "Waladina hu ma'ani al-lagbi mu'ridun." The property of a believer, the characteristic of a believer, is that he always avoids which is meaningless. He avoids the meaningless things because a believer is living a purposeful life. He's not living a purposeless life. Rather, his life is full of purpose. And what is our main purpose? To follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this purpose is not served, then a person is crossing his limits. So Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مِنْ حُسْنِ إِسْلَامِ الْمَرْضِ Of the beauty of one's faith. Of the beauty of one's faith is, تَرْقُهُ مَا لَا يَعْنِهِ A wide which does not concern him. So he should not spend his time, his precious time. We, come, we, we will realize the preciousness of our time on the Day of Judgment. There we realize the preciousness of our time. Otherwise, uh, we are not just giving too importance to the time. So the first flaw is to see that what things I should speak or what, what I shouldn't. What will benefit me here or there? I should do it. I should speak it. And whatever is... Uh, we can say uh, where there is no benefit neither here nor there I should avoid it the first flaw and this flaw as far as this flaw is concerned and uh, you see a good number of people including us also that many a times you see that we speak such things or we talk about such topics which are of no importance they are la yani la yani as I said before which it refers to neither it brings the neither it brings the good of dunya nor good of akhirah. So this is the first flaw with the with our tongue. So we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to make us aware about our, our own flaws, to make us aware about what is uh, fruitful for us and what is what is fruitless for us. So both these things have to be taken care of. And uh, so love is something which uh, we need to avoid. However, ulama, they, they, they have classified the speech into many parts. There are many types of speech. One is mubah. Second uh, is uh, mustahab or mandub. As we have five types of ahkam, so these, the speech is also classified into these five types. One is mubah, second mandu, third is wajib, four is uh, makru, and fifth is uh, haram. These are five types of speech. No doubt, mubah, what is mubah? Mubah is ma la yuthabu ala fi'alihi wa la yu'akabu ala tarkihi. This is the definition of mubah. Mubah means permissible. Means uh, allowed. Ma la yuthab ala fi'alihi. If a person practices it, he cannot get the reward for practicing. If a person avoids it, he doesn't practice it, he will not be punished. So both the ends are equal. This is known as mubah. Most of our talk is mubah, but if mubah crosses the limits, it becomes makruh. When mubah crosses, for example, a person just talks hanky panky. Meaningless is talking on and on, on and on. Then, if a person says to him, What are you doing? He says, Look at this, this is not, I'm not saying anything haram. I'm not saying anything wrong. Yes, we can say, Yes, it is mubah. Whatever you say, you are crying, you are screaming, you are, you are saying something which is uh, just meaningless. It is mubah, but within the limit. If you cross the limit, it becomes a makruh. It becomes makruh. And then, the, the third category, one is mubah, second is makruh, and third one, it is mustahab, that uh, uh, saying good to the people, 
so that they are encouraged you to perform the good. But for common people it is mustah, but for ulama it is wajib. And the wajib is saying the truth all the time. And not to tell a lie. This is wajib speech. We should not conceal the truth. Rather, we should always speak the truth. And then there is haram, haram speech. Various, there are various forms of haram speech, like a ghiba is one form of the haram speech. Telling a lie is another form of haram speech, the forbidden speech. So there are various forms. We, will, we shall see it inshallah later on, that what are the different forms of haram speech. So these are five types of haram. haram uh, sorry, these are the five types of speech as far as the kinds of speech are concerned. So first one I discuss is muba. But muba is, which is I said, which I said before, that if we do it, if we speak something which is not beneficial in terms of dunya, nor in terms of theme, nor in terms of akhirah, but it is permissible, a person can speak a thing, but if it is excess, if it crosses the limits, it becomes makru. It becomes disliked. And makru takes a person to the haram. Yes. Ulama say that. Whoever protects his mustahabbat, mustahabbat are supplementary things, optional things. Whoever protects his mustahabbat, his wajibat are protected. And whoever protects his wajibat, his iman is prote protected. On the other hand, ulama say, man tasahala bil mustahabbat, who is negligent towards the optional things. Thinking, considering that is not important. Even if I leave it, there is no problem. And slowly, slowly, he, is, he keeps on leaving everything with this, with this notion, with this, uh, within this context that, okay, it's not wajib, it's not wajib. By just using this expression, it's not wajib, it's not wajib, he is depriving himself of, of a great reward in terms of supplementary prayers. So, وَمَنْ تَسَاهَلَ بِالْمُسْتَحَبَّاتِ Whoever is negligent towards this mustahabbat, mustahabbat means desired things, optional things, which also which Sharia encourages us to do, but are not wajib. They are not they are other than the wajib, non-obligatory. They are non-obligatory, but whoever performs them, he will get huge reward. And ulama say man tasahala bil mustahabbat. Whoever is negligent towards this mustahabbat. Allah will punish him and it will affect his wajibat. That his wajib, his obligations will not remain protected. Those who cross the limits of mustahabbat, doesn't take care of the mustahabbat, then it has the impact upon the adverse impact upon the wajibat, upon the obligations. Whoever neglects the observance of obligations. Whoever neglects the observance of obligations, iman. It's quite clear that he may be deprived of the iman. So these are interconnected things. So a person speaking just uselessly, he should not think that he is doing something mubah. This mubah may push him into the domain of makruh. And if he still persists, then this domain of makruh may push him to the domain of haram, to the domain of prohibition. So the first flaw with the speech is this useless or meaningless uh, speech. Speaking about meaningless and insignificant matters. As I said before that, the life of the believer is not meaningless. He is conscious of his purposefulness. He knows that he has a specific purpose of his life. His life has not been uh, created uselessly. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَحَسِبُتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَفْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ الْمَلِكُ الْحَقِّ do you think that that we have created you uselessly and purposelessly and do you think that you don't have to return back to us exalted is the master the true master of this universe 
that you should not be under this false impression that you have been created falselessly. That you have been created, there is no purpose for you. Yes, there is a purpose, you, are, you, are, you have been created for a specific purpose and that purpose is ibadah, worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that worship of Allah has many forms. And of such forms is to observe the silence as well. Then, the second flaw. And second flaw is indulging into falsehood. By speaking about acts and things reflecting disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, such as places where intoxicants are taken and where indecent acts are committed, there are many forms of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was reported on the authority of Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said, a servant of Allah may say a word because of which he may fall into the fire, a distance that is more than that is between the east and the west. An example of such a form of word, words may be a person's hot argumentation that he launches against some other person in order to prove that he is right and other party is wrong. This may stimulate and reflect pride and showing off. In order to remedy this flaw, the Muslim should suppress pride that derives from that derives him to show his superiority over other, over the others. The Prophet has said, "The most hated person in the sight of Allah is the most quarrelsome one." Reported by Al Bukhari, and this refers to quarrel that is originally stimulated for the sake of falsehood or out of ignorance. In passing this, it's worth noting that even a person who has some right and seeks to get it should avoid disputation and quarrel as possible as he can, as they normally cause wrath, animosity and hatred. So a person has to just take care of second flaw, that is indulging into the falsehood. As falsehood in all its forms is altogether, uh, uh, it is obnoxious, reprehensible, which is not allowed in any form. A person has to try his best. A person must ensure that he indulges himself in any sort of thing which is false, specifically false speech. As, as I said before, Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi said, uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Ma yalfidhu min qawlin illa ladayhi raqibun atid. That there is no any speech, there is no any word which a person pronounces except they are vigilant, watch, watchful angels who are recording it every time. So we have to stay away from all sorts of falsehood speech, all sorts of false. And uh, Prophet Shabbat the most hated person in the sight of Allah is the most called Savan. So, and uh, uh, if a person does not observe this particular flaw, if a person does not address this flaw, then this may take a person to the depths of the Jahannam. As false speech is something which is obnoxious and reprehensible, which is not allowed by Islam, which is, not, uh, which is never appreciated by Islam. So this is the second. And, uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to free us of all sorts of flaws, all sorts of flaws of our spirituality, our inner parts, our outer parts, from the flaws of the heart and from the flaws of the tongue and fitala, to grant us the tawfiq, to fix the problems of our all parts of body, specifically our heart and our tongue. Amin ya Subhanallah wa hamdihi subhanakallahu wa hamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun lil mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh